What's up guys, I'm Alex. I'm Jason, we're the Table Monkeys, and today we are gonna dive a little bit deeper into the triad of arm wrestling techniques, starting with the post. Yeah, posting top row, obviously closest to the top of the hill, and this rabbit hole never ends, so we wanna dive deeper into this move. So today we're gonna talk about some of the keys to finish, some of the main lanes in the post, uh, some of the uh, transitions, offensive and def defensive, how to regrip effectively, and some of the tricks that you can establish in the setup uh, to beat your opponent before the match even starts. Yeah, exactly. And we'll go through the other two moves eventually as well, the hook and the low hand top roll. But uh, as Alex said, since this is the top of the hill, probably where you should start when you start with arm wrestling, we figured we might as well keep going uh, in that order. Yeah. So <clears throat> as Alex said, the first thing I think we want to talk about is the keys to finishing this move. Um, with, with the posting top roll, if you take a look at the best posting top rolls out of there or out there, you'll notice that they all finish really quickly. It's usually a very fast, explosive move uh, in which you're taking advantage of a lot of things at the very beginning. Once you have those things, you're just kind of finishing with authority. Obviously, you can do that with the other two moves as well, but that is really the kind of, um, I would say, style or like yeah. the tendency of this move is to be explosive. This move is the quickest to gaining hand control, and once you've established enough hand control, finishing the pin becomes a lot easier, right? So the post just lends itself to flash pins a lot yeah. of the time. And because of the way you're attacking your opponent's hand, trying to come up and over, it's kind of so, like kind of a bit catching them off guard or surprising. Of a, of a pressure, but it's also um, like lends itself much more to being explosive because of the way you're falling, you're going backwards, all that stuff. Where like with a hook, for example, you're coming forward. There's a lot like you have to initiate a lot more movement. Mm -hmm. Where like if you hear Travis talk about it, puts himself in an awkward position so that he can fall into the position he wants in order to make it as fast as possible. So it's just another way of how the in executing this move properly, you're gonna have to do it quickly. Yes, exactly. Right? So, um, so let's talk about some of the main lanes now. Like, where are the, where are you trying to hit? Where are you trying to go with a, with a posting top roll? So, you want to uh, establish the two, like the ninety degree yeah, thing, so and then talk about the think middle. about. Uh, I have ninety degrees of movement here from the start position. Um, so traditionally, on most posting top rolls, they'll start by going back so I can gain hand control. So that's okay. initiating with brachialis, riser, maintaining my uh, pronation. And, and mainly the thing too to think with this move, what gaining hand control means is that he's taking my riser. So if we're both fighting high, when he hits, he's establishing getting some of my riser, opening my or stretching my hand out this way. And that's the first thing you want to establish. That's the first pressure you want to gain control of before you flexion or anything else. Like he said, everything else is just static. Your fingers are like statically holding containment. Your pronation is statically holding a defensive spot where you're not getting turned over. But the main thing you're attacking is trying to think of like, if I were to do it back to you now, is opening that angle, like do it back to me. I think that's probably the most obvious way to see what we're fighting for. Yep. And that can be literally th this much. Like, oh, I just got it, you know? To gain millimeters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it makes a huge difference. So, so anyway, sorry, continue. Yeah. The first thing you're hitting is to gain that hand control, which is taking the rise. And then, obviously, quickest way from point A to B, point A to point B is a straight line. So if I have enough strength to, I'll go straight sideways with wrist flexion at this point because I now have riser uh, control. But that may not be an option for you. You may have to continue going back and opening up your opponent's bicep before going for the pin. It really depends on your strength compared to your opponents, whether they have a lot of strength or not a lot of strength in the shoulder, or they have a lot of strength in the bicep. Yeah. Uh, depends on how much side or back you're going to hit into. Yeah, um, and how much you have yourself. So if you're very, like like Travis for the most part, Travis Bajan again, and he's one of the best posting top rollers, we're gonna reference him a lot, but he's very uh, side pressure based, like he always, refers to it as a high to the side move. So basically, as soon as he establishes that hand control, he's like Alex said, going straight to the side while maintaining as much back pressure as possible. Uh, but then in other situations, like if somebody's really coming forward at him, he might be trying to get more back pressure to, before he goes to the side. So that's all gonna vary a little bit depending on who you pull. Uh, so you need to kind of play around with all those angles, right? Yeah, exactly. And if if their shoulder and their bicep are too strong and you're just getting stuck out here in this spot and you have nowhere to go, 
that's when you continue attacking the hand because breaking open their fingers will obviously make them a lot weaker. And, and that's also now what leads us to the regrips because uh, if, it, again, because this move is so explosive, you're not, if, if you get through and you've got enough either side pressure to beat their shoulder or back pressure to beat their bicep, the match is gonna end on that hit. But if, like Alex said, if they can hold these two angles tight, but they're losing their hand, you see this happen a lot with a posting top roll where we get to this position and they start getting stuck down here. This is where you need to learn how to regrip effectively uh, because that's, again, where you can really lose the match. Yeah, so in a posting top roll, what I really want is height. Like that's the way I establish at the beginning of the match and that's what I want to gain more of in the match. Yeah. So to gain height in the match, what I'm going to do is bring my elbow to the front of the pad, supinate, see my palm and rise up. So that's gonna allow me to climb his thumb and hand. I can open up my hand just a little bit, gain, a, gain higher ground, and then transition back to my post yeah. with a greater hand control. And you see how his fingers are much more open now. Yeah, and now from, from here, uh, with the regrip, like you kinda also, again, depending on your opponent, if, if you feel like uh, their bicep is the weaker part, and just opening their hand up, getting that leverage is gonna be enough to open them up this way, then continue with that. But if they're strong enough with their bicep again, a lot of people, it's about their pronation angle. So like that's where people get lost with the King's move, for example, uh, if, it, even if you're way up on my hand, if I've got my pronation still established, there's no, like it's gonna be very hard for you to finish uh, before you burn yourself out. So in some of those regrips, like Alex said about supinating and coming this way, what you can also do when you're pushing forward is, is actually push a bit to the side and try to take some pronation. So you can, you can kind of even alternate or do a bit of both between getting depth and getting height. Those are the two kind of regrips that you want to establish. And the biggest thing with a regrip is that you have to establish some sort of threat. So it like go if you're going to go to pin and then do the classic where you like give everything up, but you do the supination and everything. Yeah. So he's supinating and everything is great, but he's given up so much ground and there's no threat in the middle that I'm able to get tight again. And now the match has changed, especially if I know what I'm doing. So when he comes up from this, from the back of the pad to the front of the pad, there has to be some sort of threat either like he's doing rising up through my hand and trying to get over my hand. So I'm, oh shit, I got to hold him in. I don't have a chance to attack to the side or he's attacking a bit to the side and taking my rotation more so he can roll out again and, and take my arm that way. The point is you have to create a bit of a threat when you're regripping. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and that leads us to uh, transitions because right. you may be able to regrip and gain enough hand control to the point where you can pin them. Maybe you can't, maybe their grip is so strong and you're, you're not able to open your hand to get any uh, purchase on their hand. Or in that situation, they're on their bone structure, you're on your bicep and you're actually starting to burn out and you feel that like, you know, fuck, I only got a couple hits left and then all of a sudden my arm's gonna start going this way. So you need to start thinking about transition. So I guess since we're in this part of the match, we'll just talk about the yeah. offensive transition. So yeah. this is one of your favorites, so you, you go through it. Yeah, so easiest offensive transition, you go over your post, you get stuck, you're hitting, you're hitting, bicep is starting to get sore, so I need to transition to something else. What can I do? I can, it's similar to the regrip where I'm applying a threat I'm applying this same supinating rising threat, but instead of coming forward just to gain height, I'm bringing my shoulder back as well so I can get my shoulder behind my hand. And then from here, that's why I have this option of pressing down on the opponent's arm because now I have my tricep and my shoulder engaged. Yeah, and, and you'll see this work a lot in matches because I, in this position, if I give up my hand and let him hit, like he's hitting and he comes up for those regrips a bit, and I'm not feeling that threat because I know that this angle is still tight. The only real way to attack it, yeah, once he gets behind it, now he's really attacking this angle, which is vulnerable. Yep. Um, so it's, With my shoulder and my tricep, which are much stronger yeah, than my brack. Exactly, especially at that point where he's been burning it out and burning it out. And if somebody is really resting on here, they're really probably gonna lean in more and more. So if you time it right, like you just, the, the, the pressure difference is just, there's no way that they're stopping it. Yeah. Um, so that, that's probably the best offensive transition, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the next two we want to talk about are more uh, defensive, right? Yeah, so, trans <clears throat> so this is what happens when you're in a match against someone who is able to counter you or is stronger in your move. Yeah. Right, so if, if you're posting and I'm posting, but you have a stronger post, yeah, so you're gonna go defensive. Yeah. So again, one of the thing with both these next counters, the defensive counters that we're gonna show you, 
this is exemplifying why you need to be well-rounded to be a good puller. If you're so one-sided or one like silver bullet, you're not gonna have these options. Like if someone's able to put you in this position, that's gonna be the match. So uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so let's go there. Uh, so I, we're both posting and I win the post a bit. Yep. So I, I, I got his riser a bit and I start to go to the side and come back. Now what's a great <clears throat> counter to the post? The hook, the hook, right? So obviously I wasn't able to establish it into a, an off offensive position, but I can still establish a defensive hook where I'm now supinating, getting my cup, and I've turned him into a hook. So now his post is less effective and he's in a hook which Hopefully he doesn't want to be in. Exactly, and that's a big part of, uh, you know, sorry, that's another thing you'll see a lot in matches is somebody going for this post, loop, getting here, and then all of a sudden get put in a hook and just barely make the pit, like just miss it by this much, and then all of a sudden the whole match goes the other way because by putting it on a hook, he's actually turned it in on the, on the posting top roller's bicep, and that's not where that posting top roller wants to be, and it just changes yep. uh, the dynamic of the game. And if he's a very explosive puller, he could get caught off guard. He could have his shoulder way outside his hand when I turn him in. Yeah. So now he's not even close to his shoulder, yeah. and he's a lot weaker in this hook than he would be if he had stayed close to his arm. Yeah, that's why I, we didn't uh, talk about this as much in the beginning when we talked about keys to finishing and the speed and all that, uh, and like starting and how you want to gain your, your hand position. One of the biggest things to learn with each move, and especially this one because it is so explosive, is when to stop so that you can get those regrips effectively because if you just hit for the pad and you forget to hit for this position and then start hitting for this position and you're not aware of the space in between, it's very easy to get your body ahead of your arm in a situation like that. And once that happens, there's pretty much no answer. If you're, if you're in an all a competitive match, the match is over if you give up this much position yeah. On, on the table, pretty much. Um, okay, so setup tricks. No, oh, sorry. Yeah. One more defensive yeah. transition. <clears throat> uh, so in this situation, I'll be the posting top roller. I'll turn you to the hook, and then yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're he's a hooker. I'm a posting top roller. I know this. Uh, I can feel it in the setup, and we know that the hook is a great counter to the post. So I do not want to get turned into a hook here. So I'm gonna have to figure something out to keep you out of that hook. But being like you still this is like, he's still going to attempt his post yeah like it's not like he's going to switch in the setup and try to change his hand position to a low hand he's actually in the po in the setup going okay i know he's going to hook i'm going to be ready for it but i'm still going to try to blast through his hand if i don't get through his hand he's ready for his reaction which is going to be yeah. this and again uh, reiterating your point about this is why it's important to be well-rounded well in the triad yeah uh so as he comes into hook that's when I'm going to transition to a low hand top roll. Yeah, so, so go to post, I, post, I start to hook, and it, yeah, exactly. So I start now chopping down at his wrist, dragging back, and raising my wrist up to meet his pinky finger so he can't get his cup. Yeah, so basically like the same way uh, with the other counter where as soon if you were to post on me, as soon as like, I feel my riser going, I go, okay, I'm going to have to get my shoulder behind it and dive in. In this one, you feel your pronation going. Yep. So you're, you're going to post and you feel your pronation going a bit and you go, shit, before I lose any more of this, I got to drag it back. And like Alex said, instead of rising my knuckle, now I got to rise my wrist and I got to try to chop down instead of rising, chop down on the wrist there. And it's obviously you have to be, again, well-rounded and well-versed enough that you can do that quickly and feel it quickly. And that's why this is such a game of millimeters. Um, but it is very effective if you can learn how to do it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so those are the two defensive counters that are uh, most easily available to you uh, from a post. Mm -hmm. Now let's go over some setup tricks. Yeah, so the, we're just going to cover, again, since we're talking about these three moves and how they play with each other, uh, we're going to talk about how you, you set up for a post against each one of them. So, uh, so we'll start against a post, because that's the top. So if, uh, if Alex is posting and I'm posting, um, Okay, so we call this one the John Brzezink grip. If you check uh, back, watch a lot of John Brzezink videos, you'll see him do this a lot. And uh, basically what you're trying to do is, you're trying to, he's trying to anchor this knuckle with this finger, and then anchor that finger with his uh, pointer finger, and then anchor all of it with his thumb. And if you remember the stories of John Brzezink, apparently he's got some gigantic dinosaur thumb, so that's probably why he's really effective with it. But uh, once you play with it, it's it's very possible to get it. In yeah, I think about it. Like I've got one, two, three fingers pressing down on this knuckle yeah. to gain control over his riser. Yeah, exactly. So again, we're both posting, and he is trying to make sure that he controls my posting knuckle 
uh, first and foremost above everything else. And and also by doing this, like if I were just to if I were just to grab over my knuckle, like with my index finger where or sorry my middle finger where I want it on Alex's hand, I'm way over his knuckle. But by moving it like this, it's it's very like the knuckle's clearly right there, and he's doing the same thing. The knuckle's clearly there, but our hand, our fingers are much higher than they would be if we didn't have this specific grip. Yep. So so anyway, yeah, focusing all that pressure on that knuckle, and then when you go, you're just trying to make sure to control that knuckle because again, the first thing that you want is this angle to break against a poster. So uh, so now against uh, uh, if I'm posting and you're hooking. Okay, so I know that um, if I'm if I'm posting, I know that he's trying to turn down on me when he's hooking and, and get to like the low part of my hand and turn this part down. So what I find most effective is kind of like with a low hand, how you want to get back in the person's hand like this. I try to get high in their hand, so I'm trying to get this knuckle as close to this knuckle as possible in the in the setup. And then when we close our hands to go, I'm still posting and I'm trying to break now this knuckle, like this whole part of my hand through the top of his hand, which if you come into hook, one, two, three, if we do it fast enough, hopefully I can get into his hand enough uh, before he gets a chance to actually turn me down. Yeah, and the way you set up just gives me, gives me zero depth, right? I have a lot, little finger control. I'm so far away from this knuckle. Yeah. I don't have a lot of uh, purchase on your hand to control it. So. And the thing that's different again now, if, if he was posting, I'd probably be setting up more like this. So I, I'm setting a little bit flat, but I'm I'm still going to be posting. And the main thing I'm trying to do is get this knuckle high. I'm thinking height more than depth, but depth is obviously important as well. Yeah. Um, but it's not a full like low hand where I'm going to grab him down here. Like I'm still going to grab him high and be up on his knuckle and be going high like this. But I'm trying to limit his ability to wrap around and get low to cut me in. Uh, and then against the low hand. <clears throat> and then against the low hand, yeah. yeah. So against the low hand. So uh, low hand? Yeah. Against the low hand, he's gonna come back on me. He's probably gonna have more drag capabilities than I'm gonna have post. So I'm gonna have to kind of take his hand first before I start thinking about offensive pressures. So the way to do this is instead of pulling back and rising, but coming forward, supinating and rising to try and take a little bit of his pronation and then continuing on with the post. Yeah. So you set up normally however you want in your in your post and then off the go, um, supinating and rising, similar to that regrip pressure, supinating and rising, turn his pronation a bit, gain a bit of my cup, and then it's a lot easier for me now to pull through this riser and to try to break open his hand and wrist flexion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, so that's basically uh, the three different setups. And again, it's really important to learn all three of these moves and how they interact with each other because it's gonna lead you to all, all the rest of, of the parts of arm wrestling, um, I think more effectively or more efficiently. Yep. Um, and, uh, and it's really, once you learn them, it's really like the dance that you get to start to play like on the table where you know I start posting and then he comes in and I start low and then he's, and this is all just like a goofy little, like we're just feeling the pressures. And once you start to know them, then when you do that with people, you start to be able to identify them and it becomes like a language where you just become better and better at it where like, again, the thing that you hear about John Brzezink, what makes him so good is the fact that from here, he knows exactly what you're gonna do because he can feel all those pressures because he's gotten so used to feeling like this, that, all these different little yep. pressures that he knows what's going on. And, uh, and we just feel this is a great way to learn that, yep. practicing these three uh, moves. Arm wrestling is a martial art, it's a combat sport. So you, you can't just rely on your strength, you gotta yeah. learn these moves on the intricate level yeah. uh, to become a master. For sure. So that's the video. Like the video, like we said, we're gonna put out the hook and the low hand uh, in, over the next few days. So look out for those. Subscribe, smash the bell. All those things. And monkey step. Peace.